Hey, it's Dana from MadeEveryday.com. I hope you are having a great day. And if you need a little bit of something to brighten yours up, well, I have this really fun, happy little garland project that we're gonna sew. You can hang it anywhere just for fun. I love making garlands because not only are they a quick project, they're just so fun. They brighten up your day, they're great for a party, they're great for any occasion, and you can make them really tiny. You can make them medium-sized. You can make them scalloped like this. You can make them pennons, which is like the little triangles. My friend Catherine made some scallops that were <laughs> this big, and she hung them across an entire cabin. Super cute. And what I really love, too, is that it's just fun to use all those really fun fabrics. So. Here's what you need. A variety of different fabrics and bias tape. For this garland, I am gonna cut mine a scallop shape, which is this little round half circle shape. But again, you could do yours any shape you want. Triangles, rectangles, squares, have fun with it. This version right here, I made out of felt, which means you don't even have to sew the edges. That makes it super easy. And I wanna show you the difference between these two right here. This one, I cut a circle, a, you know, traced a plate or something like that sewed it and cut them in half, and it looks like that. But if you want your scallop to be a little longer, which is what we're gonna do today, this one is more of an oval shape, which is this pattern piece right here. I have it on my website, go to madeeveryday.com. It's free, or you can draw your own. It's pretty simple. And you can see that this just gives us a little more room when we cut it in half to have a little bit for our seam allowance. So, set these aside. And today we are using some fabric from my collection called Pickle Juice. This is a really, one of my favorite collections. I just love the color palette, maybe because it matches my house, and I love pickles, and I love all these green retro vibes. So we're gonna use this to cut out our garland, because it's gonna look great in my house, I'm hoping. So we only need about a quarter of a yard for each of these scallops. And you can cut as many as you want, but I'm gonna make probably, you can make two, from this one pattern piece because we're gonna cut it in half. So take your pieces of fabric and you're going to fold them with right sides together. That's gonna make it easier when we go to sew on our machine. Everything is already, you know, right where it needs to be. So just trace right around. Pretty simple. And to make it even faster, I'm gonna cut out two different fabrics at the same time. So let's take this one as well. Don't you love this little star print? Okay. Like that. And then just cut it out. Okay, I am going to keep cutting all of my fabrics. I think I'm gonna do about 10 fabrics. And then we're gonna go to our sewing machine. Today I am sewing on a slightly different Baby Lock machine. This is the Baby Lock Joy machine, which is part of the same Genuine series as my Brilliant. And I thought this was kind of a good beginner-friendly project, so I wanted to show you a more entry-level machine. It's more simple, but it has all the things that I need. Straight stitch, zigzag, it has some other variety of stitches as well. It doesn't have any digital features, but it has a great motor and works awesome. And it's pretty lightweight, so if you need a traveling machine, that's great too. And honestly, there's nothing like opening a brand new machine and that's an exciting moment so just wanted to show you my joy to bring a little joy to your life okay i'll stop talking <laughs> let's so i have all my pieces cut out here so i'm gonna come over i'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance which on this presser foot is this little line right here it's not the edge of the presser foot and when i need to go back that is right here this little knob goes down so forward a little bit back just like that and then we're just gonna sew around we are not gonna leave an opening, I know what you're thinking. How is she gonna get that right side out? Oh, just you wait. It's gonna be a joy to discover. Go slowly around these curves. When you're sewing on curves, you wanna make sure you take a little time so that when you turn it right side out, the seam doesn't look jagged or kind of straight in parts. On the straight way, I'm gonna go faster.
Okay, there we are. Do a back stitch. And then I have to turn this with my knob right over here. Lift my presser foot and I cut my threads right there on that little handy dandy knife. Okay, we've got one done. Now yes, how are we turning this right side out? Well, my friends, let me show you. It's quite simple, it's quite technical. You fold it in half and you take your scissors and you just cut it right down. Now we have an opening. Isn't that fantastic? So I would turn it out like this, which kind of looks like a little baby hat or a swimmer's cap. <laughs> and you want to use your fingers to really press that seam around so everything is nice and circular in there. It just makes it look a little nicer. Look at that. We're gonna keep sewing all of these, turning them right side out, and then we will press them with our iron so it looks nice and crisp. Since this is a woven fabric, when you're going around the curve, what I like to do to stay consistent is I'm just constantly kind of pulling it, and that helps me create a smooth movement and seam as I'm going. That would not work if you were using a knit fabric because it would be stretching your fabric as you go. Just pressing this nice and flat. If you want to, you can spray it with a little water or a little steam. I feel like making it really crisp makes it look really nice. I have all my scalloped pieces pressed and all prepped, ready to go. Now grab your double fold bias tape. I love to make bias tape. If you don't know what that is, check out my video, everything you need to know about <laughs> bias tape. You can also buy it at the store, but I love, especially for this project, making some out of the same fabric from the collection. It's so meta, right? Okay, so all we have left to do, we're gonna go back to our machine and we're just going to bind the raw edges into this bias tape binding. So we will leave a tail at the end so that we can hang it up or tie it onto something. And then I'm just gonna, at my machine, I'm not gonna pin these now, you could if you want to. And you also wanna look at your order, place them in an order that you think you like, or just make it random. But I'm gonna place that in there, fold it over at my machine. And we're just gonna sew all the way down, insert the next one, keep sewing, going down. So let's go to our machine. First, take the end of your bias tape and fold that over just about an inch. This will enclose the end of our string so that it doesn't start to fray. Then we're going to start by sewing that first, go down about 18 inches, and then start our first little scallop. Do a back stitch. Let's see how far I've gotten. Oh, I gotta go much further. <laughs> okay, let's put our first one in. Just open that up. And I'm just making the raw edge of that bunting scallop piece as far to the crease in my binding as I can go. Okay, oh, press my foot down, that would help. Sew it right in place. And just double check as you're sewing, make sure nothing has shifted as you're going. Now as I'm approaching the end here, I'm gonna stop and grab my next one. I find that it's a little easier to insert the next one if I leave a little bit more room there. You could bun bunch them up, bunt them up right next to each other. I'm gonna leave about a half inch or an inch spacing. I just like that, just personal preference.
I'm on my last scallop here, and I'm just doing 10. You could do as many as you want, but I am going to give a little tail at the end as well, another 18-ish inches. In fact, I'm gonna cut this right here, and we're gonna fold this end just like we did at the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna sew that little end in place. Do a back stitch. And let's see how it looks. And we have one happy, cute little garland. Wasn't that a fast project? I love making these. Go hang this up in your house, have a party, go on a picnic, find somewhere to enjoy this little garland because it just makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy too. And for more ideas and tutorials, you can check out my website, madeeveryday.com, and to check out the Baby Lock Joy Machine, or for all of your sewing machine needs, go to babylock.com, where it's all for the love of sewing. Okay, have a great day. Bye.